<laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Alrighty, whenever you're ready, it's already recording, so you can just trim it. Alright, today, um, uh, let's talk about how we keep our knife sharp in our kitchen. You can tell this is the uh, sharpening stone we got. I got from a restaurant supply store. It's about under ten dollar. Okay, and it says uh top grade carbonization silicone. It's in here a sharpening stone. You gonna see it has it have two gray. This gray color is very fine, and this the dark color is a lot rougher. Okay, if your knife is extremely dull, you're gonna use this side. But your knife generally is um, pretty sharp with it. You're gonna use the, the finer one because you do not need to um, um, take off as much from your knife. And now you're gonna see for us, I have three or uh, four typical knife we use in the kitchen. The good old Chinese cleaver and the uh, typical cutting knife you're gonna see and this is more like fillet knife and then of course have a small uh, paring knife and things like that and the way to determine we determine how whether my knife is uh, sharp or neat and sharpening I usually take it out like this and then put my finger right next to it and look straight down Okay, if your white your knife is real sharp, you are not going to see, look down there. You almost see no edge to it. But if your knife is dull, what you're going to find is like you look into the side of paper. You're going to see a white color line up among the spot that is dull, and that's where you be concentrated in there. All right, so that's how I determine whether the knife is sharp or not. Put the fingers right next to it. And then look down, straight down. Do I see a white color or line or not? And that's one good way to determine whether your life knife is real sharp or um, that needs sharpening or not. All right. Alrighty, whenever you're ready. Okay, now uh, some people use oil to sharpen their knife. I just uh, put in the sink, have a running water dripping water in here you want to keep the sharpening stone wet all the time whether it's using oil or use water okay now to sharpen a knife do not put in such a big angle because you're going to uh, not going to get a real sharp uh, edge going for cutting slicing okay so you want to put in a real small angle like this so in here and then do it a small in here smooth Continuous smooth and here and smooth and try not to and here smooth and here try to get your hand started smooth so do the whole edge and smooth and then just put the other side and then I switch holding same thing going forward smooth and here smooth going forward and I want to sharpen it this way and with the brace down and going smooth and so again the both sides I try to do it both sides smooth and then and you could go in here smooth and just go back and forth and then you could go in there again to to determine so this knife is pretty sharp to start with it I really did not and here so it doesn't take long so that's my my mid curve and and that how we sharpen the knife okay yep I'm going to sharpen a different knife and same thing but you're going to view it from different angle Okay, so going here you see I slide it so the whole braid is get covered this way, right? Cover whole braid going through and then same thing. I'm going to get a whole braid. You can see I start with the, the top of the braid and go through and then by the time I'm done I get to the whole cover the whole braid. 
like this. Again, keeping the knife in small angle. So to start with it, and that's gonna be um, make your light knife uh, very good for slicing and cutting. And you don't want to have um, the reason you keep in this angle is that you don't end up with the knife edge like this. You want to have knife edge like very um, fine like this instead of like this. If you think about the shape of the knife, so that's it. And you put your hands in here to keep the pressure on the two in here. So you can see that this knife is ready and very sharp. Okay, now um, why we're talking about sharpening a knife and how I normally handle the knife in the kitchen. Um, when I use a cleaver or the big knife, the cutting knife, and I've learned this from the chef in the restaurant, how to avoid cutting my fingers, okay? Um, so here, I do not hold the foot like this. I need to hold the foot like this and here. So when I cut, so instead of cutting like this, I'm going to cut it here. You see the braid going in here. So my fingertips away from the sharpened part and then my knuckles wants to guide the whole thick. My cutting is going to be like this, one down. See, it the braid does not come near my fingers. So, and then I just move back. So my knuckle continue to guide whole thing my thing in here. So this is what you see the chef in the restaurant. They do not need to see, look at where they're cutting and without cutting the fingers in here, slice in here. So you can see I slice them very thin or whatever and cut the same thing. So the key is that you are not holding it whatever you're cutting this way. You are using the fingertip to put pressure on it and your knuckles is the one guiding the things like this. And then you move again and you put it next to it and you move as you cut. And here's another thing, so I do not do it this way. I just basically lift, you can see is I lift the knife to the top of it like this and then slide it down, see? Okay, so this way, I do not do this motion. I rather cut just like this, and here. And same thing with this knife, the same thing, right? I put the tips on the cutting board, and then, of course, my fingers will be, my knuckle will be guiding for the thickness of it, and then, just the motion you see is cutting down like this. That's a safe, hindering to how I cut it is that again I use my finger holding it this way not this way and again this way and my knife is being guided by my knuckle not the tip like this and knuckle and here I just move my slightly moving it this way so my the top, the part, the front of the knife, the tip of the knife is real not, real lifting up from the cutting board as much. So if I want to slice it using the front, same thing, right? So I go on here, I could go on to do this way or do this way to carry it through to cut. So you're cutting it, the way slicing this way, slicing it through. So you're cutting slicing the meat, what not, in this way, and cut it through. All right, um, paring knife, use a paring knife to to put in here. Um, I do not push the knife through, not putting the knife through to cut. I going to actually move the, whatever I'm cutting through, I put, my knife is whole static, my thumbs here, and I just, pull the part through, you see? The knife is static over here. I pull this through, and I pull the carrot through on this part. I do not slice the braid this way. I actually pull my carrot 
backward. So to slide, you see, I slide this way. I accomplish the same thing. Instead of moving the blade forward like this, I pull the carry backward. See, this way I could go in here. Or sometimes if I do not want to cut through, I use the thumb. I hold it in here. I use the thumb to push the blade down. This way I control, so I don't have my blade going real far. And that's the way you cut yourself. Because I put my thumb, I could go in here, control, hold deep, and slowly. Even you accidentally cut yourself, it's not going to be very deep. Because you're going to feel the blade to your flesh as soon as you touch it. So that is the cutting over here. You're sliding that way. Okay, same thing I'm going to do, peeling the apple. So I'm going to peel the apple in here. Again, I'm rotating the apple. I'm not rotating the blade. So I'm rotating the apple through in here. You see, my my blade is stationary. So my apple, my left hand is rotating the apple to peel the apple over this way, right? So you can see, so I do not have the sliding blade. So the blade is not going this way to cut it. It's actually my blade is stable and I just loading the apple through and that's the fun with knife today